project came about in 2007, 2008, when the Wangaratta Local Aboriginal Network was first established here in Wangaratta. They developed a, a community plan which outlined local goals and aspirations. And in that plan, uh, in those early days, was um, an aspiration. They called it their own place, or our own place. And um, so it's been a goal for over 10, 12 years, which is only just starting to get momentum now. Wangaratta Gathering Place has been a vision for the Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander community in this area for a long time. That we can have somewhere that we can, we can gather, we can celebrate our culture and embrace it and enable other people in the community to learn. The partners in the project, uh, there's quite a few. So let's start with, first of all, it started with the Dirawarra Indigenous Network in Wangaratta as, um, I guess, the project owners they come up with the idea and the concept. And the other partners that have come on board with that include uh, Central Hume Primary Care Partnership, based in Benalla, uh, the Albury Wodonga Aboriginal Health Service. And both those organisations have auspiced different stages of this project. Gateway Health, where we're located today, uh, is a major, um, I guess, sponsor and also um, partner, key partner in the project. The Rural City of Wangaratta Council uh, is also a key partner. Um, we've recently had the Victorian Aboriginal Child Care Association established in Wangaratta, or VACA. So they are also, as an established Aboriginal organisation, they are a key partner in the project. And Department of Health and Human Services, who have been a uh, major funder uh, or funding partner of this project. They funded the feasibility study and they also have funded the um, next stage, which is the business plan development. So these partners initially uh, were approached to be uh, part of the project. Uh, the, the first part of the project was a feasibility study and Central Human Primary Care Partnership auspiced that project. In other words, they, they held the bank account uh, when the funds were provided then uh, they manage the financial transactions on our behalf. Um, all the other partners come together and form a project steering group or a committee and that committee met on a regular basis to uh, oversee the implementation of the projects at different stages. There's a lot of anticipation in the community around uh, the project because it's been such a long process from idea to feasibility study was probably about 10 or 12 years. We're just getting to the stage of completing a business plan now. So that's a couple of years after the feasibility study. Allowing people the opportunity to be proud of who they are and where they come from is only going to improve the health and wellbeing of their families and all Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people in the country. To be able to go to a, a specific Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander organisation you have to travel so we want to try to alleviate that by having this space. It'll certainly be sustainable because the feasibility study uh, proves that we just need to make sure that we follow the recommendations in the feasibility study and we implement business plan um, effectively to make sure that the establishment is is undertaken properly uh, we can't do too much too soon. It needs to be very well managed and staged so that it grows naturally and well into the future. So it's not going to be, uh, you know, something that's just going to be here and gone overnight. We, we, we started this project with the long-term objectives in mind of having an Aboriginal gathering place for Wangaratta, you know, forever.